Hey guys, welcome back to Unqualified Critics. And in my previous video, we talked about the arcade or not price increases. And the point I was making there was these price increases just aren't as quite as inevitable as you might think. And in fact, um, I believe they're more about profit seeking or at least as much about profit seeking as they are truly the cost of materials going up. Now, it's a complicated picture. We all know freight shipping is way up. Uh, the cost of these PCB boards and in fact their availability uh, is scarce and the cost is up. So, you know, do I have a definitive pricing sheet for all the parts Arcade One Up has to source? No, at the end of the day, only Arcade One Up knows if they have to go as high as they do. But I think there's quite a bit of evidence that they're raising the prices beyond just their price increases. But let's set all that aside for a minute because well, there are other options, and I covered that in the last video. The Legends Ultimate price has not increased other than their pinball, which did go up some. iArcade price has not increased. Well, since then, iArcade has announced they are doing their $100 off for the rest of the summer. They're also doing free shipping, and this is $100 off on all their arcades. So that's the Space Ace. That's everything else they sell. If you go to their store and you scroll, you won't see it until you click on any of these boom hundred dollars off pretty cool stuff now jong said when he announced this screw money this is about family i don't have friends i got family this is about gaming and i want to pour a little cold water on that too because well i've covered before i arcades funding uh, they're funded by venture capitalists uh, initially, they did a seed round a couple years ago, 2019, but earlier this year, they did another fundraise. So the reality is uh, they've got, well, a lot of money in the bank and the funders of iArcade, well, they expect a return. And let's do some quick back of the envelope math. Their original round was five and a half million dollars for a seed round. And I think they raised a couple million shortly after that. But typically in a seed round, you're giving up 20, 30% of their company. Let's say they gave up 25% of their company. Well, now you're putting your company at a $22 million pre-money valuation. And that investor, as early as they were, they're going to want a five or 10 times return. So they're basically betting. Put all the numbers and condense them down. They're saying, hey, we're putting in five million into iArcade. We think it'd be worth 110 to 120 million. And then fast forward two years later, May 2021, they raised even more money. But the details of that fundraise are locked down. That information is not public. And I have no inside info on that. But they raised a chunk of money, probably quite a bit more than the five million they raised initially. A conservative guess would be 15 or more million dollars. So they're raising this money and they're expecting a return. Arcade One Up, on the other hand, is not raising money. In other words, Arcade One Up has to be profitable with pretty much every unit they sell. iArcade does not. And I'm not saying this to bash iArcade. In some ways, it shows how smart they are. They're able to sell these products without making a ton of profit. And I imagine there is profit baked into this price point. However, with the cost of shipping being what it is, this is a heavy product. And we know the core components of it are pretty good quality. My guess is they're not making much off of this, but they want to sell it to you because they want you to download games from their game store. Of course, right? Look at these games, eight, 10, $12. I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. My point is maybe, just maybe, Arcade One Up's business model of selling you a cabinet now for $700 to play two games Maybe that business model is obsolete, or maybe it just needs to evolve a little bit. Because if iArcade can cut their prices when prices are going up, because they have this wonderful game store on the other side of it that you're free to shop in, well, that makes it such that it's kind of a lopsided playing field. Suddenly, Arcade went up is charging you more for a less sophisticated cabinet. I mean, this is a 19 inch monitor, 100 watt stereo speaker system and higher quality controls by a long shot. I mean, could you imagine trying to play Mutant Football League on an Arcade One Up chipset? No way, right? Now, I'm not saying one is objectively better than the other. You guys know me if you've been following the channel for a while. I actually prefer Arcade One Up's approach of separate arcades with their own games list, with a custom control panel and all of that. But it is undeniable that the iArcade's core components are superior. So now they can sell you a superior physical hardware 
for less money than Arcade One Up can sell you. The iArcade comes with more games and it's attached to a game store that's expandable for even more games. So you're not paying six, $700 for this iArcade every eight weeks or a couple times a year or every other month or whenever a new one comes out, you're just going to the download store. If this continues and if iArcade continues to grow as fast as I suspect they're growing, just based on how quickly they were able to fundraise, well, it's going to be tough for Arcade 1UP. Maybe not this year and maybe not even next year, but it's going to get rough as prices continue to rise for their components if that happens. And as Arcade 1UP continues to have nowhere to go with those prices except to pass them on to you and me, it's going to get harder and harder to justify buying their product at their level of quality over and over and over again several times a year when you could go out and buy the iArcade for $100 off or the At Games Legends Ultimate that now you'll be able to get a four player control panel for even more flexibility for $600. This is gonna push people toward more of a multi-cade approach because fewer and few of us will be able to afford a whole lineup of arcade games. And I think that's unfortunate. So what I think Arcade One Up really needs to do at the end of the day, because again, they are not venture funded. They are funded by their own profits, which in a lot of ways is a better way to operate, but it does mean they have limitations. They need a way to monetize their existing customer base. And I said this two years ago, and I'll say it again. They need the ability for you and I to download more games to their cabinets and pay money for them. I don't think they need to go fully generic cabinet like iArcade. I think they just need to have select titles able to be added to the titles they have because they already pay for the licenses. They have licenses for a lot of games that they have never released because they're not popular enough to justify their own cabinet. But I bet you if you had the Burger Time cabinet, you'd pay 10 bucks to download Ice Cream Factory. And I think that that's true for a lot of the different arcades that they have. And I think if they don't find a way to monetize it through extra game downloads or maybe some other crazy idea that I've never even thought of, I think they're going to have a tough time. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Where are you at with this? Are you still looking forward to the new Arcade 1UP releases? Or are iArcade and the Legends Ultimate and the MVSX looking more and more appealing at their price points? Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Hit that like button to supercharge this video. It means a lot to me, and I'll talk to you soon. Big shout out to all of my channel members. If you want to join Unqualified Critics, hit the red button below that says join. And thank you for watching.